from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, bringing you data-driven insights from the Cube and ETR. This is Breaking Analysis with Dave Vellante. Our inboxes are overflowing once again with predictions about the future of enterprise tech as we gear up for 2025. While these forecasts are insightful, we're going to take some time and sift through them a little bit more carefully before releasing our own predictions, which happens later in January of next year. Now, true to our tradition, we aim to set a high bar for our forecast by focusing on measurable outcomes. Whether it's tied to a specific number or a clear binary result, our philosophy remains consistent that a good prediction should be testable, enabling us to look back a year later and determine with some degree of confidence in supporting data, whether or not it held true. We don't always hit that dogma and that protocol, but we try our best. Hello and welcome to this week's theCUBE Research Insights powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis, we look back and evaluate our 2024 predictions that we made alongside ETR's Eric Bradley and Darren Brabham. And we revisit our January forecast on topics like the macro IT spending environment, gen AI ROI, security on-prem, uh, AI or sovereign AI, technology priorities, and more. Here's a quick scan. Let's start with a quick scan of our 2024 prediction. I'm not going to go through all these, but we typically do 10, ranging from, as you see here, number one, tech spending increases all the way down to the technology priorities and everything in between. But let's start out with global tech spending. For 2024, we correctly made the call on sustained budget pressures, but we thought with the Fed ending its rate hikes, the growth would be higher. It turns out we were a bit too optimistic. Our projection that large enterprises would face greater financial strain compared to smaller firms has proven correct. Current data shows mid-sized firms landing squarely within our four to 5% growth forecast, while smaller firms appear to be facing greater budget pressures. But the Global 2000 is tracking at about 2.7% growth for the year, which is pulling the average down. So for context, both Gartner and IDC were forecasting high single digit growth for this year. So we feel that our spending predictions and the data that we have now more accurately reflects the market realities. You know, we said four to 5%, it's coming in at three to 4%. You know, we may have to adjust the figures. As you might recall, last year, toward the end of the year in 2023, firms saw a year end budget flush, which pushed the final figures up. So anyway, we'll give ourselves a B on this one. Now, let's go on. 45% of customers are shifting other budgets to fund Gen AI. Our prediction was that AI would not yet be a tide that lifts all ships. And we pretty much feel like that proved true. NVIDIA, Broadcom, ServiceNow, and Microsoft are standouts benefiting from the AI wave. While Google is under fire from the likes of OpenAI and Perplexity, and the media narrative has AWS behind an AI, both of those firms are seeing accelerated growth in their respective cloud businesses, and AI and Gen AI are a big reason why. Dell and HPE are outpacing the NASDAQ year to date with Lenovo and Supermicro lagging the index, so the story there is mixed. Cisco lags the index while Arista continues to ride the AI wave, and Juniper lags the NASDAQ performance year to date despite the HPE acquisition because they basically hit that ceiling. Nobody's gonna pay more than HPE said they were gonna pay. So that's sort of stuck just, to, just below the, uh, the NASDAQ year-to-date average, uh, average growth. Now, an enterprise software sales force is roughly tracking to the NASDAQ. ServiceNow is outpacing the index, but firms like Snowflake, Workday, and MongoDB flag the index year-to-date. Now, on the AIPC front, we've yet to see the AI tailwind kick in. Clearly, Apple is marketing Apple intelligence, but the wave hasn't hit the client sector yet. Perhaps CES will be a catalyst. As such, the picture in 2024 remained very much mixed with Me Too AI lagging the leaders in a very much bifurcated picture with the haves and the have nots and cloud leading the momentum, much as we expected. So we think we nailed that. We'll give ourselves an A on that one. All right, 2024, we said a year of ROI focus, but payback is not assured. So this prediction focused on four areas. One, achieving ROI inside of a 12-month period. That's what people expected, customers perspected. We were somewhat skeptical about that, but nonetheless thought that that expectation could be achieved with smaller NPVs. Second, data quality skills, legal privacy, we said were the main blockers. We also said that payback would not be high enough 
to fund incremental budget growth. This proved true. The, the Gen AI initiatives did not throw on, off enough cash to fund higher end uh, top line macro growth. And finally, we were less than optimistic about co-pilot seat pricing in 2024. We, we heard certainly heard a lot about single agents and co-pilots, uh, but generally speaking, uh, we've kind of moved on toward the agentic era. Uh, we pretty much accurately called the ROI sentiment. We didn't think Gen AI projects would be self-funding this year, and we felt that budget pressures would continue. So for those firms that are seeing ROI, they're experience, experiencing small wins. What we referred to all year as hitting singles. It's not a criticism, just a reality that poor data quality and legal and privacy and compliance hurdles tend to slow down returns. So I think we pretty much nailed this one. We'll take the A. The Gen AI power law takes shape in 2024. This was one of our predict predictions. The Gen AI power law predicted a market structure where hyperscalers and the foundation model vendors, those big guys on the left here, dominate large language models and Gen AI, but an emerging torso of specialized domain-specific models would challenge this dominance. It highlighted key drivers such as open source innovation, on-premise deployments, driven by privacy concerns and a resurgence of hybrid cloud models prioritizing private or sovereign clouds. The prediction also emphasized that industry shift from theoretical discussions to practical applications with inference becoming a focal point. And we warned that hyperscalers needed to act quickly to maintain their lead. The anticipated shifts in deployment models and regulatory dynamics definitely took shape this year. However, on-prem deployments still lag those of hyperscale clouds you know, we, there's a lot of talk about sovereign AI and private AI, but has yet to really take the world by storm. Similarly, inference, which we said for years is going to be the dominant workload, is frequently talked about and is gaining steam. But other than activity that NVIDIA will talk about, which in many cases could be open AI inferences, chat GPT inference, hasn't really gained traction the way we had thought within the enterprise. We've said, we did it say at the time, this was a multi-year trend that would take the better part of a decade to unfold, and it appears to be happening. So we'll take a few points off and take a B plus on that one. All right, next prediction, back to basics and cybersecurity. Our prediction was that the consolidation theme would continue and benefit uh, the consolidators, like CrowdStrike and Palo Alto and Zscaler. But as we reported in episode 228 of Breaking Analysis, security sprawl is winning. Customers are not able to successfully reduce the number of tools we reported on this. Moreover, Palo Alto in the mid, in mid, mid last year, or this year, put forth the term, the phrase, the hot wind called spending fatigue as a sign that customers were struggling to retire legacy tools and narrowing down their tool sets. In addition, no one, including the Q Research, predicted the CrowdStrike incident on July 19th while not the result of a cyber attack, it did cause much consternation in the world of security and catalyzed a deeper investigation of business resilience practices. So finally, the SOC analyst experience, which we said would see transformation, it really hasn't transformed as we had hoped. So we'll give ourselves a C plus on this one. Okay, the next one, private markets. We said private market shifts, M&A and IPOs pick up. IPOs were all but dead in 2024, thanks to interest rates, uh, economic uncertainty, and election fears. The FCC and DOJ made M&A exceedingly difficult this year, and private equity limited partners. They're pressuring PE to return some type of liquidity. Basically, this prediction, you know, overall, I would say, is a was a bust, but there were some bright spots. <laughs> HP acquires Juniper, and although that's being held up by the government, it started us out strong for the year. IBM picked up HashiCorp, HashiCorp and several tuck-in acquisitions. Tama Bravo bought Darktrace for $5.3 billion. KKR spent $4 billion to pick up VMware's end-user computing business. Google tried to buy Wiz, remember that, but Wiz passed on the offer. And so while there were some others and a little IPO activity, for instance, Red, Reddit, Astera Labs, and there was definitely a shift to smaller rounds, which we did predict, this prediction, it didn't pan out as expected, so we gave ourselves a C minus on that one. Ouch, that's gonna hurt the overall GPA. All right, let's move on. Data quality and governance concerns favor trusted ecosystems. Every year, someone 
makes a prediction about governance. We get a lot of inbound on that. This was meant to be somewhat different. We correctly predicted a significant and noticeable focus on governance and data quality as a direct result of Gen AI. We feel this heightened focus would benefit trusted ecosystems such as cloud players, and we specifically called out Oracle as a beneficiary. Now in the spring, we saw an increased focus on governance as both Snowflake and Databricks made headlines related to governance by announcing open source initiatives around catalogs driven by demand for open table formats like Iceberg. We expected this trend to be more noticeable in 2024, more than ever before, and it turned out to be correct. Next year, this trend, we think, will only heighten in our view. So we're going to take an A on that one. Okay, the next prediction, renewed importance of new data literacy and skills and yes code. Darren Brabham gave us the first part of this prediction. We'll talk about the, what yes code means in a moment. This prediction is about the rise of Gen AI driven skills and tools. And this was largely accurate, but, but we're taking points off because it's more general in nature and harder to evaluate on a binary basis. What we said up front was, was uh, our, our protocol. Nonetheless, throughout 2024, there has been a notable increase in the demand for roles like Gen AI prompt engineers and broader educational offerings, focusing on AI prompt management, ethical use cases for AI and data literacy, uh, training platforms such as Coursera and Pluralsight and LinkedIn Learning have also introduced specialized courses targeting these new skill sets, underscoring the predictions validity. The surge in low code and no code adoption and tools like uh, generative UI has also gained traction, lowering barriers for business users to leverage Gen AI technologies effectively. Now, moreover, organizations across industries are prioritizing data literacy to address challenges like AI hallucinations and ensure meaningful, actionable Gen AI outputs. The predictions foresight into shifting AI budgets from IT departments to business functions aligns with observed trends as business units increasingly drive AI adoption to address specific needs. While the concept of yes code is still emerging, its integration into workloads reflects the evolving role of AI in front end development. Overall, the prediction is pretty well supported, we think, by 2024 developments, marking it as pretty forward thinking and precise. Lee Robinson's prediction submitted to us was largely correct. He said yes code, generative AI plus front end equals generative UI in 2024. We'll see more gen UI tools that enable instant creation of UI code from screenshots, drawings, voice and prompts, voice or prompts. Critically, the tools that embrace established industry tools like React for their outputs will lower the barrier for shipping generated code in real product use cases. Lee Robinson, VP of product at Vercel, thank you for that. We're gonna give this one a B plus overall. Okay, the next one, legacy rebound powered by AI, laptops, cloud, i.e. private cloud and acquired assets. This prediction focused on the resurgence of legacy. People don't like that word, but we think it's actually a compliment. Legacy tech companies driven by on-prem AI workloads. Good enough private cloud with a cloud experience on-prem is substantially similar or good enough relative to public cloud. And strategic acquisitions like Red Hat, that's what we're talking about with acquired assets paying off. That was clearly a win. We'd say this was partially accurate overall. Legacy players like Dell, IBM, Oracle, and HPE have indeed leveraged AI innovations, hybrid cloud offerings, and strategic acquisitions, particularly in the case of Red Hat, to remain competitive. IBM's Watson X platform and Oracle's cloud advancements specifically stand out as prime examples of this trend. Furthermore, Dell's incremental gains in AI server sales and its focus on AI infrastructure in, uh, align very well with our forecast and the forecasted hardware refresh cycle. Hybrid cloud adoption, as anticipated, continues to gain traction, further validating the prediction, and that said, much of the demand for AI servers is coming from large foundation model vendors that are trying to get their hands on any GPUs they can get. Moreover, the extent of the legacy rebound is uneven across the sector. While some companies have successfully closed the experience gap with cloud native players, others have struggled 
to achieve meaningful market share gains. The prediction we thought overestimated the extent to which the economic constraints have provided these companies a second life, as many challenges such as customer loyalty shifts and cloud native innovation are still a thing. Overall, the forecast captures key trends, but somewhat overstates the momentum and uniformity of the rebound. Now on to AIPCs, that trend, which was the fundamental assumption behind our laptop prediction, it simply didn't happen. But overall, this prediction is poised to take shape in 2025 and beyond. So we'll give ourselves a B plus on this one. Okay, next one, top tech priorities. Next one and last one. Top tech priorities we said would be cyber, security, analytics, AI, collaboration, cloud, network, and automation in that order. This prediction turned out to be accurate, but we're taking points away because of the degree of difficulty was a low bar, particularly with the cybersecurity prediction uh, at the top. Although the networking one was pretty good, networking has become the, good, the new bottleneck to AI. But overall, this prediction is accurate and well supported by ongoing trends. We think cybersecurity remains a top investment priority across industries with a strong focus on addressing sophisticated threats and regulatory compliance, as we predicted. Analytics and AI continue to play fundamental roles in driving innovation with organizations prioritizing data management and data warehousing to support advanced AI applications. Got to get your data act together before you can really leverage data AI. The anticipated evolution of cloud strategies is also accurate as hybrid cloud models gain traction over aggressive public cloud migrations, even though public cloud is outpacing on-prem Growth, on-prem growth is ticking up. So this aligns with several market shifts that we've observed. We had a forecast in there about RPA evolving into intelligent automation. A lot of that's kind of marketing and collaboration tools maintaining relevance in a hybrid work era. It's also, it's proven accurate, but you know, a lot of that could get back to work, go back to the office is sort of counter to some of that prediction. So we got to take some points off there. Um, so, Networking, the challenges in the AI environment, as we said, particularly around latency and bandwidth. So networking has become a fundamental component of AI strategies, becoming more prominent as we predicted. However, again, come back to RPA, I think we overstated the urgency of RPA adoption, which remains steady, but hasn't yet exploded into end-to-end -end enterprise dominance, some believe. For example, UiPath believes you really can't have extensive end-to-end -end automation without some of that RPA plumbing or at least a significant amount of that in place. You know, we'll see if that holds true. It didn't in 2024. Furthermore, the failure to predict the rise of agentic AI is a reason, another reason to subtract points. It wasn't until well into 2024 that we really dug deeper into this multiple agent, the agent control framework, the harmonization layer, which we had talked about previously, but we didn't tie it into the agentic framework to the degree that we we could have, making this prediction um, accurate, but less inspiring than it could have been. So we're going to take some points off, even though it was largely correct. We'll give ourselves a B on that one. Now, we asked ChatGPT to grade our 2025, 2025, 2025 predictions. Overall, before we get to that, overall, we gave ourselves a solid B. It was right there. If you do the math, um, it came in at about 86 uh, on a scale of a, of a hundred. So pretty solid B. Seems like we're always, we're like a perpetual B student in our predictions. But for kicks, we ran our last year's post through ChatGPT and asked it to, um, to give us a, a grade, overall a grade for each one and an overall grade. It take into account the degree of difficulty. It gave us an A minus overall. And we feel like this evaluation from the LLM is overly optimistic and too lenient, but thank you. Again, we pushed the LLM and said reevaluate it based on the degree of difficulty. And for what, it worth, what, what it's worth, it gave us uh, the following grades in, in the order. Gave us an, an A for the first one, an A minus for the second one, uh, a, 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 an A minus for the third. It actually boosted it. A B plus, another A, another A, another A. A lot of A's. Thank you, ChatGPT. A B downgraded from a B plus, another A. Overall, the assessment from ChatGPT was an A minus. So thank you. Um, said, while we excel at identifying major trends, 
pushing further into high difficulty areas like niche or contrarian predictions could elevate the challenge and the reward. Anyway, thanks, ChatGPT. What do you think? How did we do in 2024? And more importantly, what are your predictions for 2025? As you recall, we publish with ETR's Eric Bradley every year. We publish in the last week of January, so send us your predictions. We review all of them, and we pick a few to highlight. So thanks for participating. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks to Alex Myerson and Ken Schiffman on production and in our podcast, and Kristen Martin and Cheryl Knight help get the word out on our social media channels and in our newsletters. And Rob Hoff is our editor-in-chief over at siliconangle.com. Remember, all these episodes are available as podcasts. Wherever you listen, just search Breaking Analysis Podcast. I publish each week on thecuberesearch.com and siliconangle.com. And you can email me at david.vellante at siliconangle.com or DM me at dvellante or comment on my LinkedIn posts. Please do check out etr.ai for the best survey data in the enterprise tech business. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube Research Insights, powered by ETR. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time on Breaking Analysis.